So today's question, let me get set up actually, this is not really, that could work. So our buddy James says, I really want to learn how to lucid dream, but I'm just tired of learning. I'm tired of lucid dreaming and then just getting insomnia. So he's worried that when you learn how to lucid dream, it's all, it's automatically going to mean that you have to experience insomnia and you can like interrupt your sleep in that way. Now there's a few ways of approaching this. The first way that I want to talk about is you don't have, lucid dreaming does not equal insomnia. There's no situation where you have to be an insomniac to lucid dream. And in fact, you can't lucid dream if you, if you have insomnia. Um, so now what, what I mean by that is if you, have in, if you really have insomnia, meaning you can't fall asleep and you, tr you have trouble falling asleep for the entire night, how are you going to lucid dream anyway? Because you need to be asleep and dreaming in order to have a lucid dream. So I think what James, what our buddy means by this is not that he has insomnia, but he, that he has trouble staying asleep. And that's a different problem entirely. If you have trouble staying asleep as opposed to falling asleep in, in the first place, your problem isn't with lucid dreaming, your problem is with your sleep patterns and your sleep habits. Don't worry about lucid dreaming. That's not your problem here. Your problem is probably that you're not going to bed and waking up at the same time every day, even on weekends, you're not exercising enough during the day, and your sleep environment, meaning your room and how it's laid out, is not conducive to sleep. It's probably set up in the wrong way, like you've probably got flashing lights or sounds, or maybe the windows are open and you can hear too much noise outside, maybe it's too light, maybe you need to invest in some blackout curtains, maybe you need to invest in a better memory foam mattress. So it could be any of it could be any of these problems, or it could be an actual sleep disorder. And now for the purposes of this video, I'm going to talk about how to fix this, assuming you you don't have a sleep disorder. If you have something wrong with your sleep and your the way your body falls asleep, then you need to see a specialist. And I'm not a sleep specialist myself. I deal with lucid dreaming, so I don't want to give wrong advice on that front. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to talk about how you can how you can fall asleep better and not experience your what you call insomnia and still have a lucid dream. So the way, the way I'm going to start this is by saying that everybody needs to be falling asleep and waking up at roughly the same time every day. This is what always should have been the case, uh, you know, going back, going back thousands of years, you know, we would always fall asleep when the sun went down and wake up when the sun rose in the morning pretty much every, everyone was doing that, and it's known as our circadian rhythm. Now, because now in civilization and society today, we don't want to do that for one, for one reason or another, you know, we want to watch Netflix shows in the evening, we want to get up early to go to work when it's still dark. Whatever the case is, for some reason, we're not following our natural circadian rhythm anymore. So there are a few things you can do. You can either decide to create a lifestyle that is useful for the circadian rhythm, meaning find a job or negotiate with your job or quit your job and work for yourself in order to wake up when the sun rises as opposed to when the alarm goes off. See, any one of these points, I could go down a rabbit hole and explain, you know, and talk for hours and hours about any one of these things. So I'll try and be as concise as I possibly can. So your, op your first option is to create a lifestyle, like I said, which helps your circadian rhythm. So that means either finding a job which is afternoon hours, right? Not nine to five, or negotiating with your current job to start later or work from home, or, or some, something which means that you don't have to wake up before the sun has risen. But that isn't as important as in the evening, which is the most important of all. When the sun goes down, when it gets dark outside, you should be starting to wind down and go to sleep. Now I, much to the ridicule of my friends, tend to go to sleep really early. I go to bed at about nine o'clock. Uh, you know, very latest I'll go to bed at ten, but you know, normally anywhere between half eight and nine in the evening I'll be in bed, or at least starting to wind down for the evening. Like maybe I'll be reading, maybe I'll be, you know, having a relaxing bath or a shower or a meditate or something. But I'll be winding down. You know, I won't be, I certainly won't be like watching films and there are exceptions, but for the most part, I'll be in bed before 10. And the reason for that is because I've tuned myself to my circadian rhythm. When the sun goes down, my body starts producing melatonin uh, in a higher quantity, meaning I fall asleep and I stay asleep. This is the reason I have such good sleep. I never wake up in the middle of the night. I never have nightmares, so to speak, you know, very, very rarely. 
and I have a lot of lucid dreams naturally. Not just because of the circadian rhythm, but because of the other things as well, like the practice, the habits I practice and the techniques I've developed and this sort of stuff. But the reason I feel good and sleep well and don't experience what you're describing as insomnia or sleep disturbances is because I've tuned my body very well to the circadian rhythm. When the sun rises, I wake up. When the sun sets, I start to get ready to go to sleep. So that in itself, right, but just, just tuning yourself to your circadian rhythm will fix 99% of sleep problems. Especially if you're having a, having a hard time staying asleep or falling asleep or, you know, sleeping well or waking up feeling rested. That will fix like 99% of your problems, I guarantee it. Now there's some, there's different ways you can do this and I, I think that's going to be for another video because this has gone on long enough just talking about that. So the second thing you can do is you can, I've always mentioned in my videos the idea of, this idea of spending yourself, exerting yourself during the day. Meaning to do everything you can possibly do, to give your mental energy, your physical energy and just to, to really exert yourself in terms of what you're doing. So like wake up and try and fill every minute of the day with activities, with doing something, whether it's having a conversation, having a debate or, you know, producing something, writing a book, doing work, whatever it is. And also physical exercise comes into it as well. By the, by the time it comes to sleeping time, when, when the sun goes down in the evening and, and your body starts producing melatonin, which by the way makes it so much easier to fall asleep if you actually let your body produce melatonin, who would have thought, right, it's the body's natural process. Because you've exerted yourself during the day, you'll find it so easy to fall asleep. Really so easy. Like, I don't even, rem I never remember falling asleep, as I'm sure most people don't. But, you know, there's not even that awkward 20 minutes where I'm just sort of laying there trying to get comfortable. I, I just lay down and after like a few minutes, probably five minutes, I, I can't put a timer on it because I don't really, I'm not aware of it. But for probably about five minutes time, I'm fast asleep. And... That is because of these things, because of the circadian rhythm, because I'm exerting myself during the day, I'm going to the gym, I'm exercising, I'm, you know, doing the things humans were designed to do. And that's, that's it, guys. I mean, I'll briefly touch on the last point which I mentioned, which was setting up your, like, your sleep environment, your room, okay? I kind of like having this desk here, by the way, just as a side note. This feels like a little panel show, almost. And, uh, yeah, this will probably stay. Anyway. What was I saying? I was saying about the sleep environment. So it helps to set up your room in a way that is, makes, it use, makes it easier to lucid dream and to sleep. So what I mean by that is your mattress ideally should be memory foam. You should have ideally some pillow sprays you know, by your bed and spray them on your pillows before you go to sleep. Ideally the ones with lavender, you know, we've, we've uh, done a video on this before sort of proving that that does help you fall asleep, lavender pillow spray. I like to have plants and sort of ivy, I don't know if you can See in the background here I've got pieces of, they're not real ivy, but they're, you know, ivy and greenery in, the, in your room will help to make you relaxed and to feel like it's a safe space and a soft sort of sleeping environment, right? I've got my plants, I've got ivy hanging down from the mandala there. I've got, you know, things that will make it feel more relaxing. The mandala flag in itself, behind, you can't see it now, but behind most of my videos, the giant blue mandala flag, is there as a sort of central piece for the bed to make it easier to relax and fall asleep. It's a nice pattern, you sort of, you're drawn into it and it sort of provides a relaxing, much like a piece of art on the wall would help relax you and set the atmosphere. I feel like the mandala and the plants set the atmosphere for sleeping. So that leads me on to the other point which is to have a, have a nighttime routine but more importantly just follow the steps that I've already mentioned, the circadian rhythm you know, the things that your body is designed to do, you'll find that when you actually listen to your body and follow your biology, everything else is so much easier because you don't need to battle with your own physiology and, and how your body works. Your body knows and is your body is wired to produce melatonin when there is an absence of light, right? So when the sun goes down and it gets dark, your body is hardwired to produce melatonin, which Melatonin, when it builds up in your system, will make you feel sleepy right up to the point where you can't stay awake any longer and you just fall asleep instantly. It's a very, very complicated and effective process which you don't need to interfere with. It's as simple as just not watching television for much longer after the sun has gone down. 
that's all you have to do and, and your body will take care of the rest. If you just do that, if you just focus on not having any artificial lights on or you know very minimal lights like dimmer switches or soft lamps after the sun has gone down, your body will take care of the rest. You'll, you won't have any trouble falling asleep and staying asleep and dreaming and therefore eventually lucid dreaming. It will just happen naturally. Anyway, leave a, leave a little comment and let me know what you think about this setup here. Um, this might stay for a few days, I quite like this. But I'm not sure how the audio will be, so leave a comment letting me know about the audio.